My name is Romeo Bhatti. I'm a student nurse practitioner. I will be recording the video of head to toe assessment. I have received the written consent from my patient, which is right here. Are you the same patient who signed this consent? Yes. Okay, I have my ID here. Uh, from the United States University, uh, Umiyo Bhatia, MSN to FNP program. I will be doing the 360 view of the. I'm using my laptop to record this video. I'm using the 360 view. Okay. Alrighty. And I have my supplies here, my patient here, I have a couch here. So my patient can lay down and we can do the abdominal assessment. The roof, our floor, okay. And I can, I will be using the mirror to show my laptop. All right. This is the no, uh, consent here. Okay, having a hard time using this mirror. Okay, that's my laptop, these are my ears, okay, now I'm going to go ahead and start, I have the checklist here, I have make sure patient's consent is signed, I have supplies, good lighting, I'm using the laptop to record this video, I have introduced myself to my patient but I'll do that again, I've used the mirror to for the integrity check. And I'm doing a verbal attestation statement that I promise to adhere to the student code of conduct that I'm not using any outside resources or help in any way. Alrighty, now I'm gonna go ahead and start this. Hi, my name is Romeo Bhartia. I'm a student nurse practitioner. I have done the hand washing already and uh, I will be recording this video of head to toe assessment. I will be uploading this on the YouTube, okay, for my school purposes, United State University. Are you giving me the consent to go ahead and record this video? Yes. Okay, so the written consent will also be uploaded, okay, for my instructors and uh, uh, this will video will be seen by my instructors and sometimes the other peer, peer students would like to look at it so they, they can also view it okay all righty <coughs> now tell me your name my name is Jason Paul your date of birth 09 1981 how old are you 42 year old excuse me what is your race Asian and sex male when you were born you were born as a male yes okay what's the reason for coming here today physical assessment okay my patient is here for a physical assessment but if he is here for any kind of problem I will be using the old cards method to uh, get the information on the signs and symptoms. So onset, location, duration, uh, characteristic, alleviating and relieving factor, the treatment, the severity of the problem. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and obtain the, my patient's past medical history. When was the last time you had your physical exam done? March 2023. When was the last time you had your eye exam done? March 2023. When was the last time you had your dental workup done, like a cleaning of the teeth? March 2023. Okay. And when was the last time you had a lab work done, CBCB? April 2023. Did they find anything abnormal in your lab work? Yes, everything normal. Everything normal? Yes. Okay. Alrighty. Do you have any kind of chronic medical problems? No. Do you take any medication, any over-the-counter medication, any multivitamins? No. Okay. If my patient take any medicine, I will ask the name of the medicine, the dose of the medication, the frequency, and the reason for taking that medication. Okay. And uh, do you have any psychiatric or medical pro uh, mental illness? No. Have you ever been hospitalized due to mental problems? No. Have you ever been hospitalized recently due to any other problems? No. Okay. Is your childhood vaccine up to date? Yes. Do you have a flu and COVID vaccine? Yes. How many COVID vaccines did you uh, have? Two. Okay. And how about any kind of infections? Were you exposed to any kind of infections? No. Have you ever had any kind of sexually transmitted infections? No. Have you ever had any kind of surgeries? No. If my patient have any surgery, I will ask the reason for the surgery. When was the surgery done? If they have any problems or complications from the surgery or from the anesthesia. Okay. Are you sexually active? Yes. Okay. How many partners do you have? One. Are you, do you have a female partner or male partner? Female. Okay. And do you have children? Yes. How many children do you have? Two. Do you use protection for yeah. protection? Yes. What kind of? Condom. Okay. 
Alrighty. Do you do your testicular self exam and breast self exam every month? Yes. Okay. If my patient is a female patient, I will be asking the menstrual cycle. When was the last time they had a pap smear done? If the periods are regular or irregular? If the uh, they have a cramping during the period? If they are heavy periods, and uh, um, uh, uh, if they had a uh, pap smear done and they do the breast self exam, if uh, how about their pregnancy state, if they have any pregnancy plans, and then I will be explaining then about the breast self exam to check every month, same time of the month almost. For the men and female, men and women both, it's very important to check for any kind of nodules or any kind of uh, tenderness in the breast or any kind of drainage from the nipples okay and then testicular self exam you know you already do it it's better when you're doing in a standing position holding the testes between your fingers and rubbing it and see check for the skin and if there's any nodules any kind of uh, tenderness okay look for those alrighty and uh, do you have any kind of uh, uh, like uh, problems at home no Okay, alrighty. So that is your past medical history. We went over the immunological, uh, sorry, immunizations, your surgical history, your medications, your chronic problems, your psychiatric history, and your sexual life. Okay, sexual history. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, go over your family history, okay? Do you have your grandparents alive? Yes. On the both side, mom's side and dad's side? Yes. And uh, uh, do they have any medical problems? Diabetic and blood pressure. Both mom side and dad side. Yes. Your grandparents. Mm -hmm. How about your parents? Do and they uh, have any medical problem? Yes. They are both alive. Both. Okay. And they have medical problems. Yes. What kind of problems they have? Blood pressure. Do you have any siblings? No. Okay. Do you have any childrens? No. Okay. Alrighty. And uh, uh, after that, I'm going to be going ahead and move on to your family's uh, head, uh, ears and nose, H-E-E-N-T problem. Is there an, anybody in your family have a hearing problem? I mean, sorry, the headaches, tension headaches, any kind of brain tumors? No. Any dementia or Alzheimer's? No. Any neurological problems like seizures uh, or tremors? No. Any problem with the eyes, the cataract or glaucoma? No. Any problem with the ears like hearing loss in the early ages or uh, frequent ear infections? No. Any kind of nose problem, nose stiffness, nose congestion? No. Or bleeding from the nose? No. Any kind of mouth problem like they uh, had a, a sore throat frequently or any kind of dental problems? No. Any kind of uh, endocrine problem like uh, hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism or no. Okay. Any kind of heart problem? They have any heart attacks or any uh, like uh, high blood pressure? You told me they have high blood pressure. Mm. How about uh, high cholesterol? No. Anybody in your family have like a dysphagia, like a swallowing problems? No. Okay. Anybody in your family had a loss of taste or smell in their early ages? No. Anybody in your family have breathing problem, shortness of breath, asthma? Uh, or bronchitis or COPD or emphysema? No. Anybody have a problem with diarrhea, constipation, inflammatory bowel syndrome or ulcerative colitis? No. Anybody have a problem with BPH or problem with the urination? No. Okay. Anybody have musculoskeletal problem like frequent falls, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis? No. Anybody has sexually transmitted infection? No. Anybody in the family have any kind of infections? No. And how about uh, uh, neuro... Uh, Psychiatric problem, any kind of depression or anxiety in the problem? No. In the family, sorry? No. Any bipolar? No. Any any history of suicides in the family? No. Okay. Any history of substance abuse in the family? No. Okay. Any kind of genetic problems in the family like Huntington disease or sickle cell anemia? No. Anybody had a bleeding problem like uh, if they, they have anemia or they bruise easily or if they have any kind of uh, uh, like they get a cut and they, it takes long time for them to get better? No. Okay. And how about uh, any kind of uh, like frequent sickness like they get sick easily? Anybody in the family? No. Okay. Anybody in the family have problems with alcoholism or any kind of drugs? No. Okay. Anybody in the family have uh, like uh, um, 
social disturbances like this any kind of stressors like they they have episodes like mental problem like they wanted to hurt themselves or they wanted to uh, hurt themselves no okay so we went over um, Hang on. Uh, the family history and uh, no genetic problem, no immunological, no neurological, no psychological, no bleeding problem, no uh, hematological, no endocrine, uh, no ear, eye, nose, mouth problem, no musculoskeletal problem, no genetic disorder, no sexually transmitted infections. Alrighty, now I'm going to go ahead and move on to your sexual history. I mean, social history. <laughs> I'm tired. Social history. What's the place of birth? Your place of birth? India. And what is your race, ethnicity? Asian, India. Okay. And uh, or nationality? You're Indian. 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 Okay. Indian. And uh, what is your occupation? Cashier. Okay. Uh, where do you live? Do you rent or do you have a house? House. Have you ever ha served in a military? No. Are you married? Yes. Okay. How about your hobbies? What kind of hobbies do you have? I read a book. Okay. And watch TV. Okay. And uh, how about your social life? Good. Good. Okay. Do you go out with your friends? Yes. Okay. Do you feel safe at home? Yes. Uh, do you have any kind of uh, stressors? No. Do you sleep good at night? Yes. How many hours? Eight hours. And you feel fresh the next day? Yes. Okay. And uh, do you have any kind of abuse in the house, like any physical, mental, or emotional abuse? No. Okay. And uh, anybody, um, do you smoke? No. Drink alcohol? No. Any vaping or recreational drugs? No. Do you smoke medical marijuana? No. Okay. And uh, how about uh, your eating habits? Uh, Good. You you drink water, coffee. Yeah, drink water, coffee. Okay, how many times a co do, a day do you drink coffee? One time. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, and how about your walking, like exercise? Yeah. Do you walk? Walk. How many times a week? Three to four times. Four times. Okay, how many minutes? Forty minutes. Every time. Yes. Okay, that's good. Alrighty. And uh, do you feel safe at home? Yes. Do you guys have, do you have guns at home? No. If my patient have guns, I'll ask them to keep them locked or if they are locked up. And uh, do you use the seat belt when you drive? Yes. Do you text and drive? No. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. And uh, uh, you live in a house, right? Yes. You told me that with your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And uh, how about your religious preferences? Do you go to the church or? Yeah, the temple. You go to the temple? temple. Okay. The you go every week or? Yeah, every week, sometimes two weeks. Sometimes two, two times? Yeah. Okay, that's very good. So you consider yourself a spiritual person, huh? Okay. Alrighty. Uh, that's all about your social history. Uh, we talked about your hobbies, we talked about your eating pattern, we talked about your family life, we talked about marital, military situation, military service. Uh, okay, now I'm going to go ahead and move on to your history. Uh, first of all, I'm going to be asking your general overall history. Do you have any fever, chills, any weight loss, any fatigue or lethargy? No. Do you have any problem with your headache, migraine problem, tension, headache, cluster headaches? No. Do you have any problems with your ears, like any drainage from the ear, or do you see any floaters? No. Excuse me. Do you have any problem with your ears, uh, like uh, any kind of drainage from the ears or loss of hearing? No. And no problem for the eyes also, right? No, you don't see any floaters, no drainage from the eyes? No. Any nose stuffiness or congestion? No. Any bleeding from the nose? No. Any mouth problems like dental problems, missing teeth or any uh, problems with the sore throat or any swallowing problem? No. Do you feel heat or cold intolerance? Mm, yes. You feel? What? Like do you feel like you cannot tolerate a whole? No, no, no. No? Okay, Fine, yeah. so that is for endocrine, you know, mm. to check if uh, for thyroid or mm. uh, hyperthyroidism or diabetes, you know, okay. checking for those. And then, do you have any palpitations in the heart or chest pain? No. Do you have any breathing problem, shortness of breath or asthma? No. And do you have any allergies like medication allergy, food allergy, 
environmental allergy, allergy to latex. No. Okay. Does anybody in your family have any kind of allergy? I forgot to ask you that earlier. Yeah. No. No. Any food allergy in the family? Any no. medication allergy? Any latex? Any environment allergy in the family? No. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, sorry, I forgot about that uh, previously and now it just came in my mind. Okay. Do you have any kind of arthritis problem like joint stiffness, morning stiffness in your joints or any pain? No. Okay. Do you have any problem with diarrhea or constipation? No. Do you have any problem when you go urinate, pee no. like urgency, frequency or any kind of blood in the urine? No. Okay. Do you have any uh, like a, a mobility problem? No. Okay. Do you have any uh, psychiatric problem, depression, anxiety or do you feel sad or no. depressed or Okay, and do you have any kind of neurological problem like uh, seizures or uh, uh, I can say dizziness problem? No. Okay, alrighty. And do you have any kind of infections? No. Previously uh, or currently? Any sexually transmitted infections? No. Okay, and you do not smoke or drink alcohol? No. Okay, and you do not use any recreational drugs? No. Okay. Do you have any problem with like bru bruising, like where you feel like you bruise easily, and if you get a cut, it takes a long time to get like heal? No, no. no. Do you uh, feel like you get sick easily? No. Okay. So no immunological problem. No. Okay. Do you um, uh, participate in any kind of alternative health practices? No. Okay, like you know, IV hydration, some people do that, uh, but you do not practice any alternative health practices. No. Okay, um, so I think that's all about your history. You do not have any kind of cancer, right? No. No uh, genetic problems? No. No, okay. No psychiatric problem, no neurological problem? No. Okay, now I have asked my patient his history and uh, um, now I'm going to be go ahead and move on. I forgot to ask you about your skin and breast. Did anybody, the, I mean, do you have any skin problems? No. Do you look at your skin when you take shower? No. You yeah, I see. You but so, no, no, but no, there's no, no problem. problems. No problem. Okay, any problem with the breast? No. Okay. And I, I also forgot to ask you, anybody in your uh, family have any skin problems? No. Okay, alrighty. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the inspecting your body system. First of all, I'm going to be in looking at your overall. My patient is alert and oriented. He knows what's his name. He knows the date of birth. He knows where he is. He is sitting upright, he's able to make eye contact with me, he's happy and uh, he's very pleasant, he's a very reliable source of information. He came to the clinic by himself and uh, he there is no mobility problems and uh, he is also um, skin wise, you know, if I'm looking at his overall body, he is well dressed, skin is nice and pink well dressed for the weather it's a summer time right now so uh, he's well dressed and uh, he's able to make his needs known his attention spam memory they are all intact uh, and uh, i have done my patient's vital signs sitting and laying and he did not complain of any dizziness or any syncope his vital signs were his respiratory rate was 17 his blood pressure 118 over 68 his heart rate was 72 and his temperature which was done orally was 97.1 degree fahrenheit and his oxygen saturation was 99 percent on room air and then he did not complain of any pain okay <clears throat> now I'm going to go ahead and move on to his height and weight. He he is 5 feet 9 inches. He weighs 140 pounds. So his BMI according to that is uh, 21. Okay. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the inspection of the uh, hair, skin and nails. So first of all, I'm looking at his hairs. Hairs are symmetrically distributed. Uh, there is no dandruff, no lice infestations noted. They texture wise they are looking soft there is no unusual pattern of baldness skin is nice and pink face is symmetrical there is no edema noted and uh, there is no ulcers no lesions no macules no papules no pustules noted in upper lateral upper and lower extremities 
and uh, if my patient have any kind of lesions i will be following a b c d asymmetry or border the color the diameter on the evolving so i will be using that to check the lesions my patient's skin is nice and pink no macule no papule no pustule no lesions no nodular atrophy noted his hands uh, are looking nails looking nice and pink no clubbing or cyanosis of a nail and uh, no tenderness, uh, no complaint of pain, no uh, erythema, no edema, no swallowing. Uh, so uh, that is about the inspection of the hair, the skin and the nails. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the inspection of the head and neck. Looking at his head, head is symmetrical, atraumatic. Have you ever had any head injury? No. Okay. Head is asymmetrical, atraumatic and there is no lesions, no dentations, I'm palpating the head, no lesion, no dentation, no masses, uh, no unusual uh, loss of uh, hairs or baldness pattern and uh, hairs are very soft and nice, uh, no erythema, no masses and his face is symmetrical, no edema on the face, ears are symmetrical, eyes are symmetrical uh, neck is midline, no swelling on the neck noted. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and check his TMJ. Go ahead and open your mouth for me. Okay. Alrighty, TMJ is the temporomandibular uh, joint that is intact. There is no tenderness noted. Now I'm going to be checking for cranial nerve 5 and 7. Cranial nerve 7 is a, a, a facial nerve where I'm going to be checking his movements of the face. I'm going to have him puff your cheeks for me. Smile. Front, raise your eyebrows. Okay, that is cranial nerve number 7. That is facial nerve. Now I'm going to check cranial nerve number 5. First of all, I'm going to be checking the sensory function of the cranial nerve. Go ahead and close your eyes and you're going to tell me if it's a soft or a sharp object. Okay. Okay. While I'm checking the cranial nerve number 5 sensory, I'm going to be checking in all the upper extremities and the lower extremities. I'm going to move this a little bit down so you can see. Okay, I'm going to starting from the top. Okay. Sorry. Soft. 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 Sharp, sharp, soft, soft, sharp, sharp, soft, 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 sharp, 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 soft, soft, sharp. So his cranial nerve number 5 which is sensory is intact and uh, uh, cranial nerve number 5 is also a motor function. To check the motor function when I am looking at his uh, temporal muscle and the masector muscle I am going to have him clench his teeth to check the strength. Go ahead and clench your teeth like this. Okay. So motor and sensory function in the cranial nerve number 5 is intact. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, check for the cranial nerve number 11, that is a shoulder shrug, go ahead and jerk to your shoulder shrug, okay, that is a uh, cranial nerve number 11 spinal process which is intact. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the eyes, when looking at the eyes, eyes are symmetrical and there is no exudate, no drainage, no erythema noted, eyelids are symmetrical in relation to the eyeball. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the uh, Snellum chart test that is to check the cranial nerve number 2. Cover your one eye please and read the line for me. This is usually done at a 6 feet dip. L-T-P-F-H. Okay, go ahead and cover your other eye and read the line. L-T-F-P-H. Okay, go ahead and read with both, both eyes. Uh, so my patient's vision is 20-20. Usually in the office the chart is at 20 feet and over here it is at uh, 
six feet distance. So cranial nerve number two is intact. Now I'm going to check his pupillary response. The my lights are dim. I'm checking the pupillary response. Pupil are equal and reactive to light, 4 mm, constricting to 3 mm. Now I'm going to be checking for, that is called the direct response. Now I'm going to be checking the consensual response. That is if I'm putting the light on the right eye, his left pupil will also constrict. So that is the consensual. I'm putting the right on light on the left, right one is constricting. Now I'm going to check for the convergence. Follow this along. Okay, so his eyes are moving inward. That is convergent. Now I'm going to check for accommodation. Look here. Look at the wall. Look here. And look at the wall that is for the accommodation now i'm going to check for his extra ocular movement follow this but do not move your neck okay i'm checking the extra ocular movement in the six cardinal gaze uh, and his ocular, extra ocular movement cranial nerve three four and six are intact that is oculomotor trochlear and abducens nerve those are all intact okay now um, I'm going to use the ophthalmoscope to look into his eyes. The diopter is at zero, the lights are dim. I'm going to use right hand to check his right eye. When I see the retina, uh, red reflex, I see the red reflex, I'm moving close, holding his head and upper eyelid. I'm looking into the inside. I can see the cornea, macula and phobia, the vessels, Cup to optic disc one to two, no exudate, no cotton wool spots. Now I'm going to be doing the same thing on the left side, left hand, left eye. Open your eye please. I'm looking at the red reflex. I can see the red reflex. Now I'm going to be moving closely, closely, holding his upper eyelid. Okay, no exudate, no internal hemorrhages, cup to optic disc one to two. I can see the cornea, macula, and phobia. All right. No cotton wool spots. So that is the eye. Um, so in conclusion, people are equal and reactive. No exudate, no drainage noted. We did the Snellen chart. Cranial nerve number two, extraocular movement. Cranial nerve number three, four, and six, and then uh, also uh, check the pupils pupillary response, convergence and accommodation. And when I did the extraocular movement, there was no nystagmus noted. That means there's no oscillation of the eye movements noted. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the nose. His nose is midline, I'm inspecting it. There is no drainage, no uh, deviation of the septum noted. And if I'm looking inside the nose, the septum is midline, no drainage, mucous membranes are nice and pink, turbinates are intact, okay. And after that, I'm going to check the patency of the nose. Close your one nostril. Take a deep breath. Close the other one. Take a deep breath. Nose is fated. Now I'm going to check for his olfactory nerve. Close your eyes for me and I'm going to have you smell something, okay? Close one nostril for me. Thank you. And what do you smell? Coffee. Okay, close the other nostril for me. And tell me what do you smell? Lemon. Okay, so olfactory nerve number one is in that. So we are done with the nose here. Septum is midline, no deviation of the septum. Mucous membrane in the nose are intact. And uh, mucous membrane intact, turbinates are intact, no drainage. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the ears. I'm inspecting the ears. There's no tenderness, no tenderness at the uh, targus, no redness, no, drain, no drainage, no exudate noted. And now I'm gonna be using the otoscope to look into the ears starting from the right side I'm going to be looking inside with the light folding his head like this securing it looking inside the ear no cerumen tympanic membrane intact and uh, no redness no exudate no drainage cone of light is at five o'clock position no Tympanic membrane is pearly gray. Okay. And I was able to see the malleus on that side. On the left side now, looking at the tympanic membrane, the ear canal is nice and clean. No serum, no drainage, no exudate. Tympanic membrane pearly gray. Cone of light at 7 o'clock position. I'm able to see the in malleus. Okay. 
Alrighty, that is about the ears. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the mouth. The lips are nice and, oh, I'm going to do the whisper test. I'm sorry, I'm not done with the ears, okay? Close your one ear and I'm going to whisper a three-syllable word. Five, four, three. Oh, sorry, I'm going to say. Five, four, three. Close the other one. A, B, C. Okay, his whisper, uh, he was able to hear. Now I'm going to be doing the uh, Webber's and Ryan test. Set the tuning fork into the vibration. Put it on the mid of the forehead. Are you able to hear both ears equally? Yes. Alrighty, now I'm going to go ahead and do the Ryan test. R, I, N, N, E test. I'm going to set the tuning fork to the vibration. Put it on the mastoid bone. Tell me when you don't hear it anymore. Not here. Not here. Okay, so air conduction is more than the bone conduction. Sorry, I have to hit my laptop because the light turns off on my laptop for some reason. Alrighty, now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. On the mastoid bone. No, listen. Okay. No listen. Okay, so air conduction is more than the bone conduction. No conductive or sensorial here. No in this patient. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the mouth. Lips are nice and pink. Uh, and symmetrical. Uh, open your mouth for me, please. Mucous membrane are nice and pink. Tongue, tongue is midline. Say ah for me. Ah. Okay. When he say ah, he was able to articulate ah. That means I'm checking for the cranial nerve number 9 and 10, which is the glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerve. And I'm able to see the anterior and posterior pillars. Soft and hard palate. Uh, and tonsils are 1 plus. No exudate, no ulcer, no white spots, no white patches, no drainage, um, no missing teeth, no dental caries noted in his mouth. Alrighty. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the, uh, I can do the glands first since I'm already here in the mouth. Pre-auricular, I'm palpating, no tenderness. Post-auricular, occipital here, no, no tenderness. And then I have a submandibular here. Any pain or any tenderness? No. Okay, and then submental here. Any pain, tenderness? No. Anterior clavicular, any pain or tenderness? No. And posterior clavicular, no. I have done the occipital and supraclavicular here. Any no. pain or tenderness? No. And then axillary lymph nodes are under the eye pits, both sides. Any pain? No. Okay, and then epitrochlear, epitrochlear on here. Any pain or tenderness? No. On this side, epitrochlear, any pain or tenderness? No. Okay, and then he have his inguinal glands here in the femoral area. Any pain or tenderness? No. Alrighty, so that is about the lymph node. Now I'm going to push on his maxillary sinus, frontal and maxillary. Any pain or tenderness? No. Okay, no tenderness, no pain noted on um, the sinuses. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the neck area. Neck is symmetrical, midline, trachea is midline, no deviation, no edema, no swallowing, no goiter noted. Now I'm going to be checking for his thyroid gland. Checking from the behind, first moving, going from here to the chin area, the first hard part I can feel is the thyroid cartilage. Then moving down a little bit is a cricoid cartilage and then to the lateral side moving down for two finger, uh, I can, okay, that is the thyroid on the side, thyroid gland. Go ahead and swallow for me. Swallow. Okay, go ahead, swallow one more time. Okay, so I was able to see the asymmetrical movement of my fingers when he was swallowing. That is checking for the thyroid gland. Okay, now while you're here, I'm gonna also check your upper face movement of the face. Flexion, extension, side to side, and uh, circular motion okay and then i'm gonna also check your tongue strength which is hypoglossal nerve nerve cranial nerve number 12 okay okay i'm gonna have him push his cheek against uh, push his tongue against the cheek on this side and this side okay that is a uh, hypoglossal nerve okay that is nerve number 12 Alrighty. 
Now uh, we are done with the throat, we are done with the gland. I can be also looking at the JVD on both sides. JVD can be best uh, uh, done, checked when the patient is laying and with the head at 30 to 45 degree angle. Now I can palpate the carotid arteries. They are two plus. Now I will be listening to the carotid arteries with the stethoscope, with the bell and the diaphragm. The diaphragm and the bell, no thrill noted. Okay, so that is uh, upper uh, head, eyes, nose, mouth, ear, neck. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the thorax and the lungs and the heart, okay? So if I'm looking at the thorax anteriorly and posteriorly, Chest is very symmetrical, there is no heaves or no lifts noted. And also on the back side, and I'm palpating now the uh, thorax area. Any pain or tenderness? No. Okay, now I'm gonna be palpating anteriorly. I did posteriorly. Any pain, no crepitus? No. No heaves or lifts noted? No. No. Alrighty, any pain? No. Okay. Now I'm going to be palpating the uh, thorax area. I'm going to have him say 99. 99, 99, 99, 99. And same thing on posteriorly. 99, 99, 99, 99. Okay. Now I'm going to do the precursion. Precursion. Okay. I'm able to hear resonance. Resonance. Resonance resonance but if there is a consolidation in the lungs then i won't be able to hear the resonance then i will be able to hear the dullness but in this case i'm able to hear the resonance and then i will, will do the chest excursion go ahead and take a deep breath for me i can see the movement of my thumbs and my hands equally equally rising and going downward now i'm going to be checking the back precursing the back and looking for the diaphragmatic excursion please thank you so much take a deep breath for me resonance I can hear the resonance 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 and over here I hear the dullness I will mark that area and then from here to upward take go ahead and take an exhale exhale for me resonance resonance I'm sorry I have dullness here dullness and I can see the resonance it's right here and I will mark that area and same thing on this side, we'll take a deep breath for me and hold it. Resonance. You see the resonance, 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 and dullness. I can hear the dullness here. And then I will be moving from dullness to the resonance. Take a deep breath and hold it for me. Dullness, dullness, and I can see the resonance here and then I will mark it. And then I will measure the diaphragmatic expression. It's three centimeter, okay, which is normal finding. Now I can do the chest excursion on the back. Also take a deep breath. All right, I'm able to hear the my thumbs and the hands moving equally in both directions. Now I'm going to be listening to the lung sounds anteriorly and posteriorly. Go ahead and take a deep breath for me in a ladder fashion. Okay, lung sounds are clear, no rails, no wheezing, no adventitious breath sound. Go ahead, take deep breath. Okay, his blood sounds are clear and auscultation, no rails, no wheezes, no crackles noted. Now I'm gonna be, uh, we did the diaphragmatic excursion. I'm gonna move on to the heart. I'm looking at his chest wall. Um, there is no barrel chest noted. Uh, chest is wall is pretty symmetrical. Now I'm gonna be palpate between the intercostal spaces. Any pen tenderness or any pain? No. No crepitus, no tenderness. 
Same thing I'm palpating on the back. Any pain or tenderness? No. Okay, spine is midline, no pain on the spine area. Now I'm going to be listening for his uh, um, heart sounds with the diaphragm and the bell in a sitting and a laying position. That's what we're supposed to do. Okay, now I'm going to be doing starting from the right thigh second intercostal, that is the apical pulse with the diaphragm and the bell to the left second intercostal pulmonic with the diaphragm and the bell. Third intercostal is the Earl's point, diaphragm and the bell. Fourth intercostal is the tricuspid, diaphragm and the bell. And fifth intercostal is mitral valve, diaphragm and the bell. And this is also PMI, midclavicular fifth intercostal, okay? And then using, we're supposed to do this while laying and sitting. So um, now uh, we are done with that. Now you can go ahead and lay down. So I'm going to be listening to his uh, heart sound when he's laying also. Okay. I think the computer just closed by itself. Okay. Alrighty. Now I'm going to be uh, continuing with the heart sound while he's laying. Apical, right, inter right second intercostal with the diaphragm and the bell. And then left second intercostal with the diaphragm and the bell. Arus point, third intercostal, diaphragm and the bell. Fourth intercostal, tricuspid, diaphragm and the bell. Fifth intercostal, I think able to see a SONS2, diaphragm and the bell. This is also the midclavicular fifth intercostal. That's the apical impulse PMI. Okay, so that is the chest part. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the abdomen, looking for the symmetry, the contour, the peristalsis, the aortic pulsation, uh, SITs, uh, any stri, um, any discoloration, the skin color, no yellowish, so no jaundice, uh, no redness, no erythema, no ascites, no pulsations, uh, looked at the color and the contour, abdomen is flat. Okay, now I'm going to be listening to the bowel sounds in the four quadrant, starting from the no masses, starting from the right lower quadrant. Right upper, left upper and left lower quadrant. Bowel sounds are normally active in four quadrants. Uh, now I'm going to be go ahead and listen to the aorta. Okay, it's above the umbilicus aorta with the diaphragm and the bell. Okay, now I'm going to be listening to the renal arteries, diaphragm and the bell. Renal arteries, no bruise or thrill noted. Iliac artery, diaphragm and the bell. Then on this side diaphragm and the bell and then his femoral artery diaphragm and the bell femoral diaphragm and the bell and then here he have the inguinal glands also that we're supposed to palpate okay now i'm gonna be precussing so when I'm doing the precussion, uh, precussion, I am starting from the right side. I'm able to hear tympani because tympani is mostly heard on the air filled spaces. So this is right lower, right upper, left upper, and left lower. I can hear the tympani over the bladder also. His bladder is empty, but if it's full, I will be able to hear the dullness. Now I'm going to be precussing for the liver from the umbilical to the lateral side. Tympani, tympani. Can hear the tympani, tympani, and I hear the dullness here. Then I will mark that area. There is dullness here. Yeah, I can mark that area. And from the top, third intercostal, can hear tympani. Alrighty, dullness. Then we will measure the liver span from the markings. It's six centimeter, which is normal. Six to twelve is normal. Okay, the liver is on the right costal area and the spleen is on the left costal area. 
okay that is uh, the liver span we percuss the liver and then move I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the left can you turn a little bit on this side sorry thank you already oh, this while percussing the spleen area I can hear the tympanic sound and no dullness which is normal finding uh, that means there's no splenomegaly now since I'm here I can palpate the spleen take a deep breath for me alrighty spleen is non palpable go ahead and now I'm going to use a hook technique on this side from the lower top rib intercostal space hook technique go ahead and take a deep breath okay I can see the liver margin they are soft and non tender and uh, now I'm going to be precursing with the palpating with the one hand light palpation looking at the face no tenderness no masses no hernia and then with the deep palpation on the right side right left right upper left upper left lower alrighty now I'm gonna have him sit up for I'm gonna be checking for the CVA tenderness and the kidneys okay here is the the kidney area any pain no Okay, now I'm going to be checking for severe tenderness. Any pain? No. Any pain? No. So I applied the direct and indirect pressure. There's no complaint of pain, so there's no severe tenderness. Okay, now that's all about the abdomen. And uh, since he is uh, standing, uh, now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the upper, upper extremities, the range of motions, the inspection and the palpation of the upper extremities. Uh, we did the CVA tenderness, we did the carotid JVD. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the upper extremity. I'm inspecting the hands. There is no nodular atrophy, no redness, no erythema, no tenderness. And the same with the wrist, symmetrical, no tenderness, no erythema, no dryness on the elbow, both sides. Shoulders are symmetrical, no tenderness, no warmth no redness noted now I'm going to be palpating the hands joints the DIP PIP and MCP joint any complaint of pain no any tenderness same no. thing on this side DIP PIP MCP joints any complaint of pain or any tenderness nails are nice and pink no, no. and I'm palpating the wrist the ulnar area and the radial and the ulnar side and the medial any complaint of pain? No. Tenderness? No. No redness? No nodule? No atrophy? No. Same thing, I'm palpating here the olecranon process, the epicondyle, lateral epicondyle, and the medial epicondyle. And then I'm palpating the shoulder. No tenderness, no atrophy, no nodules. And then I'm looking at this elbow also olecranon process, the medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle. And when I'm doing the shoulder palpation, in the shoulder I'm going to be starting going from here. This is the acromium joint, a acromium process. If we have any pain or tenderness here, do you have any pain or tenderness? No. We usually start from the sternum area here, look at the clavicle. And if you have any pain, we can check this motion, movement, then move on to the olecranon joint. There's a complaint of pain or tenderness. Then we will move on to the cricoid process, which is right here. We can feel it when we're moving the arm, okay? And uh, any pain or? No. If you have a pain or any tenderness, that is tendonitis here. And then we will be checking for this here. Any pain? No. Tenderness? If you have any pain or tenderness in this area, that is a pathological uh, finding. Same thing on this side. There is a chromium joint. Here we can move on to the cricoid. And uh, here, okay. So this can be, a, if there is pain in this area, there can be a if it's this area uh, that is a pathological uh, finding and if there's pain in the acromium joint that is a 
can be a osteoarthritis or a subluxation uh, and uh, if there's any pain here that can be tendonitis all right now we're going to go ahead and move on to the upper extremity range of motion first of all we can start with the hands okay the flexion extension and then we can do the finger abduction adduction now we're going to do the thumb flexion extension abduction and then adduction okay those are the hand movement now we're going to move on to the wrist flexion extension radial deviation and ulnar deviation okay now we're going to move on to the elbow flexion extension supination and pronation now we're going to go ahead and do the shoulders this flexion then extension okay and abduction then adduction and then internal rotation both sides internal rotation and then this is the external rotation okay and you can also do this for external rotation okay those are the movements of the joints of the upper body now we can go ahead and do the lower body and since he is also standing here i can check his brachial pulses okay the bilaterally uh, palpable 2 plus and the radial pulses the palpable 2 plus and then femoral palpable 2 plus then behind the knee is his uh, popliteal behind the knee i can check those those are palpable 2 plus and then uh, on the top of the foot is the dorsalis pedis palpable 2 plus and then on the back right here posterior tibial these are also palpable and 2 plus now we can go ahead and move on to the lower extremity uh, looking at his feet they are looking good no calluses no corns you can sit if you want to okay so there is no calluses no corns no tid no uh, plantar fasciitis no nodules no masses no lesions no mortons neuroma okay no motor neuroma. Now I'm going to be doing the, looking at the ankle. There's no nodule, no pain. Then I'm going to be looking at the patellar area, supra patellar area. And then we can also look at the hips, the anterior superior iliac spine, posterior superior iliac spine at the greater trochanter. So first I'm going to be doing the movement, the range of motion on the feet, active and passive. Okay. So go ahead and to the dorsiflex or like this and then plantar flex okay and then I'm gonna do with my hand okay so flex then plantar flex dorsiflex and we're gonna move the ankle joint okay both side okay then do the fingers dorsi plantar sorry plantar flex dorsiflex and then the fingers abduction and then adduction okay abduction and adduction plantar flex dorsiflex now we can do the knee and when we do the knee no and this is a flexion you can stand up if you want to okay we can look to the the knee uh, flexion extension flexion and then extension okay and then we can do the hips um, the hips are a little bit hard with the internal and external rotation but the other one we can do so when we are standing here uh, actually hips are better if we do when we are laying down okay so do you want to lay down for me it's hard today so with the hips we do the flexion we do flex all the way and go in that is flexion and then flexion here and extension okay and then we will do this is abduction adduction same thing here abduction and adduction now we're going to do the hips internal rotation we're going to move this 
and internally rotate. That is internal rotation. Okay. Now we can do external rotation, move inside. Okay. That is external rotation of the hip. Now we can check the strength. Go ahead, push against. Okay. Ready. Relax. Strength is 5 out of 5 in all the upper and body, lower parts of the body. We push down, up, in the rear. Arms, you just put your arms like that. Okay, alright, you can stand up. So, strength is 5 out of 5 in all the areas. We did the range of motion, active and passive on the lower extremity and everything. Now, we can look at, go ahead and look at the spine. The spine is midline, no tenderness, no uh, kyphosis or lordosis or noted. Go ahead and bend, uh, touch your, okay. See, spine is very symmetrical, midline. Go ahead and stand up straight. No kyphosis, no lordosis, no tenderness, no pain in the spinal area on palpation. Now, I'm going to go ahead and have you... Uh, do the deep tendon reflexes and after that we can be doing the walk. Okay, go ahead and sit here for me. If you want, you can sit there. It's up to you, you can sit there. Okay, we'll check the deep tendon reflexes. So bicep muscle, go ahead and sit down. Relax your arm, bicep, tricep, and break your radialis. And then same thing on this side, bicep, tricep sorry break your radialis then we have acular patellar reflex same thing on this patellar reflex and achilles tendon achilles tendon and then also bobinski sign so i did the patellar here patellar here and then achilles tendon achilles tendon on the back and then now we're going to do the bobinski Okay, his feet, the toes are curling inward. All right, from the sole to the lateral side of the feet. Those are the deep tendon reflexes. Now I'm gonna go have, have you walk. Walk regularly, yes. Okay, now you're gonna walk from heel to like this, yeah, tandem walk, yes. Okay, here I'm checking the coordination, the balance. Okay, and now go ahead and stand straight, close your eyes, we will check if there's any pronator drift. For 30 to 40 seconds, there's no drift or no swing, which is normal. Okay, now you can keep your eyes closed, touch your nose, okay, with the other hand, with the other hand, okay, all right, now you're going to Touch the heel of one foot to the shin of the other, like this. Uh -huh. Very good, you can put it down, and then the other one. Okay, so those are the point movements we did. We did the walk, we did the touch. All right, I think we did everything. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much for letting me record this, and 